right, today I'm going to test out these Sabot slugs, or Sabo, however you want to say it, 12 gauge. Uh, we're going to be testing for accuracy out of a 24 inch rifled deer barrel, Mossberg 500. Uh, a week or two ago, I did smooth bore with nine different uh, rifled slugs, the Foster type slugs, out of the smooth bore. I'll put a link in the description of that video, so make sure you go check that out. But today, we switch into the rifled barrel so we can test out these Sabbath slugs and see which one of these are the most accurate. Also coming up after this, I got a rifled choke, which allows you to shoot not only Sabbath slugs out of a smooth bore and get some spin on them for stabilization and accuracy, but you're also, according to the instructions, supposed to be able to use this for rifled slugs as well, and it's supposed to give better accuracy even with the rifled slugs. So I'm gonna be testing that out next and see how true that is. And like last time, I saved one of each because I'm intending on doing a gel test with each one. Uh, so hopefully I have that coming up sometime as well. So let me get this thing zeroed real quick and we'll go ahead and get started. So we got the Hornady SST 300 green. These Winchesters, they are standard velocity, so it should be a little lower recoil. Uh, here you got a 300 grain. I believe it's a 45 caliber bullet with the ballistic tip. There's that ballistic tip down in there you should be able to see. Again, I believe it's 45 caliber bullet. And then these are one ounce. Now one ounce is 437 grains, I believe. So these 300 grains are coming uh, in way lighter, but that's also why they're so fast. 2,000 feet a second uh, like I said this is kind of a light load for one ounce at 1350 this says these are 50 caliber uh, here you got a one ounce at 1450 but with the uh, Remington God, here we go so that's a one ounce slug at 1600 just with the standard rifled slug so both these are going kind of slow for a one ounce slug Anyways, we already covered that. Uh, these got <sighs> kind of a just a lead hollow point there, but I, I looked them up and they're kind of shaped like an hourglass inside of there. Remington Premier Copper Solid, one ounce at 1450. There's your information on that. Yeah, this doesn't really give you much. Of course, I already showed the information on the SST. Now these, so these have this solid copper bullet down in there. Um, I don't remember if this said what caliber it was, but I can tell you that they look larger than these 50 calibers. I mean, it's kind of hard to see with the shade down in there, but they are a larger diameter than that. So it doesn't say what caliber, but they're definitely larger than 50. Now these, a lot of people familiar with these, Remington Premier AccuTip, 385 grain, so it's still not a full ounce, but it's a lot heavier than that, but that's also why it's slower. In my opinion, Remington made these to compete with these. Uh, but these punch a lot bigger hole. Uh, they're pretty fast too, considering they're 385, they're still going 1850 advertised compared to 300 grains, 2000 advertised. And it's set on here somewhere, the caliber of these. 58 caliber so other than not knowing what caliber these are these would definitely be the largest caliber and they get that weird little plastic thing in here let's see where your stats are as far as well it doesn't give you a drop chart or anything like that all right so just like in the rifled slug video i got the target well i i tried for 75 there uh, range finder says 7980 so we're at 7980 yards in that target and please excuse me for using a human target but I don't have uh, anything left of the others <clears throat> alright guys the target down there already has one hole in it um, so disregard that from the group I'm gonna start out with the Hornady SST 300 grain and we'll just do three four shot groups down there like we did for the rifled slugs a week or two ago
Oh. All right, that was super low right, so I'm gonna have to make some adjustments on this scope. It was pretty close up, uh, up close, but down there it's way off, way low right. All right, that should have been enough to make sure we hit the target every time because that was so far I was afraid that, you know, depending on how big the group was, we might miss the paper. So now we'll do a three-shot group. All right, let's check it out. All right, here we are. So remember, this was the hole that was already there before we started shooting. That was my 25-yard uh, sight in, which I started way up here. But anyways, this one doesn't count because that was already there. So our first shot from this distance was down here, and then after I adjusted the scope, we had these three shots. So I was feeling really good about it with these two because that's definitely a tighter group than what we got with the rifled slugs. Also, this is about five yards further, as I stated. Pretty sure I pulled that one just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I'm not quite as steady at this range with the setup as I am at the other larger range. So whatever groups I print today are gonna be just a little bit larger than what they probably should be. So, um, I mean, I'll take this, but that should probably be down here a little more. I do believe I pulled that one a little, but uh, like I said, whatever we print today, it'll probably do a little smaller net. I'm not the most steady on the setup I have today. Now, if you check out the rifled slug video, uh, there was a huge difference in point of aim from one shell to the next. Hopefully not as bad on these, but we'll find out. I'm just going to run the Winchesters now. We'll see. Well, it looks like very low right again, so those shifted a lot compared to the Hornadies. About a foot. Let's see if that'll get them where I need. That's more like it. I was doing so good and that last one dropped a lot lower. All right, there was our first shot there, barely nicked the paper. So, you know, we had the Hornady's up in here, switched to a different shell, and that's about 10 or 11 inches off from where the Hornady's were grouping. 
So even with these sabot slugs and the rifled barrel, there's still a vast difference between point of impact depending on which one you're going to use. So now I was doing so good with this. I was like, uh-oh, these are going to be more accurate than the Hornady. I did find a slightly better hold on the bag. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to reshoot that Hornady group if that third one goes anywhere. But yeah, it. Uh, I felt good about all three of these trigger pulls. I was right on the X. These two did fantastic. And then this one dropped about three inches low and left from that one. So I thought it was going to surprise us there for a second. But that third one really opened up and it was good trigger pull on all three. Hopefully these will be on paper. The Remington Copper Solids. Good, those are right in the bullseye. <laughs> that one surprised me a little bit. Well, that was a, a great shot, great release, and it was still pretty far off from the first shot, so I don't think that one catching me surprise made that one drop low like it did. We'll go ahead and send the fourth one down range since it's in here. Well, that one went back to bullseye. All right. So our first shot was one of these two. I think it was that one because I was like, ooh, I got it in the bullseye. So one of these two, maybe the orange one there. So that was good. Those hit pretty much the same spot as the previous, just a little bit higher. Uh, the second shot got me a little by surprise. I wasn't quite ready. I applied a little too much pressure to the trigger before I quite expected it to go off and it went off. And that one went clear down here from there, so which is still within the group size that we've been getting. So I thought, well, you know, maybe it caused me to pull that a little because I wasn't quite ready. And then on the third trigger pull, I got 100% excellent release right on the X, and then we went clear up here. Um, and then finally on the fourth shot, it dropped back down here. So I'm going to go with that's just the group because this one was, you know, I don't... Maybe I pulled that by it getting me by surprise. I don't really think it did. Because as I said, I was still on the X when it went off. So, honestly, I believe that's just the group with these. The fact that the last one came right next to the first one is just a fluke, I believe. Alright, so last up, the Remington Premier AccuTip. All right, so surprisingly, those are very close to point of aim as well. So that's good.
Go away for the wind. All right, and then there's our group on that one. Looked really promising at first because the first two shots hit the same spot. I got a good trigger pull and release on all these guys. And then the third one, I was like, no. And uh, this one here went just about where I had the crosshair. You know, I was about on X for these three. And then that last shot, I drifted just a little low right, right around in that area. And the slug went right where the crosshair was. I was like, ooh. That was surprising. But here, these two were high compared to where I was aiming. So, yeah, those first two, man, I was like, ooh. But, yeah, it was too good to be true. So, that's our results with these. And I got a good release on all those. So, I'm not worried about pulling any of those. That's just what we grouped. All right. Results. Before we get started here, discuss something real quick. Remember, this was with a Mossberg 500 with their 24-inch rifled and ported deer barrel you can see the ports there so these are my results today with this gun if you have a, a Remington 870 it might pattern better or worse with some of these or a Weatherby or a Winchester so on and so forth so depending on what gun you have and what barrel you have your results may vary also one thing I'm noticing again link in the description to the shootout video of all the rifled foster type slugs for this out of the smooth bore i'm not seeing any better accuracy honestly <laughs> um now these will definitely be more accurate at long range and will also let you shoot longer range because well the hornady specifically in that last remington they shoot much faster uh the center two don't they're actually slower <laughs> Uh, but the the ones on the ends are a lot faster, so they shoot a lot faster and a lot flatter So they allow you to reach out further because your bullet doesn't drop off so much like a rock and also In theory these should be more stabilized because of the rifled barrel um, but with that being said Again out of my gun These are about the same group size. I mean slightly better on some as what I got out of the smooth bore with the rifled slug. So again, the link in the description, make sure you go check that out to compare. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, however, my setup here, I mean, it's pretty steady, but it's not quite as steady as I was at the, the uh, larger range. So these groups could probably be shrunk in 10 to 20%, I would say. I'm still shooting pretty good off of that, but just not quite as steady as I was at the other range. So... With that in mind, you can shrink all these 10 to 20%, I would say, and that would be about the group you would get, which would make them slightly smaller groups than with the smoothbore barrel. But not a big difference. Honestly, I was expecting a much bigger difference. So here's the Hornady. And, of course, we got a four-shot group with that. Actually, guys, remember this far right shot was actually a sight-in shot from 25 yards. Uh, so please ignore me speaking that this is a four-shot group because it was, in fact, a three-shot group. Uh, the one circled was not part of the group. And there's these. There's Winchesters. And this is a three-shot group, I believe. Yep, because that one went down there. You know, these are about the same size. Like I said, calculate for... 10-20% smaller because I'm not quite as stable, but that's those. These are probably the worst. Like I said, I wondered if that one that surprised me caused me to fling that, and then this was an excellent shot and release, and it was clear up there, so I'm going with that's just the way it patterns there, and then there's those ones. So, I don't know. This is obviously the largest group. And it seems like these two are tied for the tightest and Hornady just a little larger. Now that might be a little larger because, well, for one, that's a three-shot group, or excuse me, four-shot group. Remember, as I just stated about 60 seconds ago, the Hornady was, in fact, a three-shot group. One of those was for sight-in. I said a three on here, but this one was a four. 
Yeah, they're all about the same. The Hornady is a little larger. Again, the far right shot was not part of the grouping. Uh, therefore, Hornady tied with the Remington AccuTip. Anyways, that's the results. Not exactly what I expected, but it is what it is. Um, like I said, these will give you further range shooting and should be more accurate at longer range than a rifled slug out of a smoothbore because they're better stabilized. Make sure you check out the link in the description for the previous video where I tested all the rifled slugs. As I said in the beginning, I'm going to be testing this rifle choke here next, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys liked the video, make sure you leave me a like, and I'll catch you on the next one.